Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. Good morning. We're still in Texas. We are. We just went through a major thunderstorm, lasted all night, and I think it stayed right over our house. We had thunder and lightnings all night long. Our poor dog is in shock. I slept through it. Yeah. Lots of help you were. <laughs> okay. If you remember last week, we talked about Jesus restoring Peter to fellowship after Peter had denied Jesus three times on the night of his arrest. And this week, we're going to talk about the power that changed the life of a lame man from a helpless person into a joyful worshiper of God. And it's the same power that makes us, you and I, and Julia, we got to include Julia, sons and daughters of the King, Jesus Christ. So the word lame means disabled. And um, in the Bible, this is the word that that is used and what we see in this person is a picture of ourselves where we are all in some way in need of healing in our body or in our soul and either one and both of them Jesus can heal us and like the lame man we might wish and we'll learn about how he had hoped to get some money we may be wishing that we had more money, but we'll learn that having a relationship with the Messiah is worth so much more than dollars and cents. And like the lame man, we may ask for something from God, and yet we will learn that his love alone will transform us. And like the lame man, we can experience the love of Jesus, his power, his authority, and gain a glimpse into the kingdom of God. All right. Would you like to lead us in prayer? Yes. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. And we really do thank you for the rain because Texas has been in a drought for a number of months. So the rain was a blessing. Uh, we make fun of the thunder and lightning, <clears throat> but that just comes with rain. We ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, and as we learn about your power that you have to change our lives, to change our attitudes about ourselves and about those that we love and those that we come in contact with. Lord, we just ask that we be prepared to receive your message. We ask that you would guide Julia and I uh, to speak the words that you want spoken because this is your Sunday school program, not ours. And so we just lift up to you, Father. Thank you for all that you do. Look for your guidance and direction in every aspect of what we're doing this morning. Bless our young people. Bless Julia and I. And we are so excited about getting close to having Sunday school on premise. And we just hope everybody is as excited as Julia and I are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are studying in the book of Acts, and we are starting in Act, we are studying today in Acts 3 and 4. And starting in Acts 3, we are going to jump around a little bit, not a lot, mostly everything is in, we're not jumping around, we're going in sequence, but we are, we are reading selected passages but all of it from Acts 3 and 4. So now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those who going, were going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now, reading in verses 7, 8, and 9, 
Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. The people saw him walking and praising God, and they were amazed. And while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? And if you remember when we built the temple, which is still in the Sunday school room, uh, there was Solomon's porch, and that's where this event took place. Uh, in ver ver verses 14, 15, 16, we read, You dis disown the holy and righteous one and ask the murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him up from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith, in the name of Jesus, the man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophet, saying that, this, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then. And turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Now, continuing in Acts 4, we, uh, verses 1 through 4, we read, Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. If you remember, Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. The Pharisees did, but not the Sadducees. And they laid their hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to about 5,000 people. Now that's just men. That doesn't count the women and children. So what an exciting time that had to be in this simple uh, event where they healed a lame man. It resulted into over 5,000 people being saved. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Anna, Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands before you hold. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. And so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them and said, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you judge. But we, for we cannot speak 
we cannot but speak the things which we have heard and seen. Now remember, they were talking to the same leaders that had just recently crucified Jesus. Put him in prison, yeah. beaten him, put him on a cross, and had uh, the Romans uh, execute. So when we say uh, Peter was emboldened in the spirit, we really mean that. He had courage because remember the night he was arrested, he denied Christ three times. Mm -hmm. And here he is a few days later mm -hmm. standing up saying, this is Jesus whom is God's son who healed this man and we only heal in his name. What a 180 turnaround. What a powerful truth he told. All right, now it's question time. My favorite part of the question, lesson. Question time. Question. Okay. Uh-oh. Press the wrong button. Technology issues. What was the man doing at the beautiful gate of the temple in Jerusalem? Well, he went there every day. He, he was begging. And in the passage it says that somebody had to carry him there. He couldn't get there on his own. And they put him there. He sat there for the day asking people for money, coins. And he only got enough money every day just to get by, enough to buy a little bread, or maybe a little meat. Uh, and he had been doing that since he, he was born a cripple. So now he was not as a child at the gate, but as he got older, he was probably a teenager, from then on, he was at that gate asking for money. It was the only way that he could make a living, to, make, to, to get the food that he needed to stay alive. And sometimes we wonder why God allows people to be born disabled. And um, like so many other things that we ask, why does God allow? This is an imperfect world. This is an, a fallen world with sin and sinners in it. And, and this is why disabilities exist. Not because people who have disabilities have sinned, but because this is an imperfect world. And you know, there's imperfections we see in lots of different ways, and disabilities are one of them. Absolutely well said. And all of us have disabilities, or all of us have imperfections, and some of our imperfections are more visible to each other and some of them were more hidden. So that's the answer to that question. I'm gonna make it a long answer, aren't I? Yeah, great answer though. All right. All right. Okay, what did Peter give the man? Well, Peter had no money to give him. So he gave him, he did give him a healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And I started to say he didn't have any money, so this is what he did. He got something much, much more valuable, much more valuable than a couple of coins. So I wasn't quite saying it right. He gave him a healing. He, from Je with the authority of Jesus Christ. Which here's a man Jesus that had never been able to walk, right. do anything on his own, and they come along, he wants money, but he says, I don't have money, but what I do have, I'll give you. Yes. And he gave him the power of Jesus. Yes. Okay, number three. Did the man fall down after trying to walk for the first time? No, he didn't. He stood up, he walked, he leapt around. I, I, can, I can sort of imagine what it must have felt like it for him. He'd been unable to walk since he was born. And finally, he's able to decide, I want to go over there. And he's now able to do that. Uh, he has now a future that he had never dreamed was even possible. And it was all made possible because of God. You know, it's amazing. About seven years ago, I broke my left leg uh, really good. Really badly. We had to ride in an ambulance. And I was in a cast for a long time. And I had to stay in the hospital. I lived on a boat, but I couldn't be on the boat because the cast was restricting what I could and couldn't do. He was in a wheelchair. 
and getting on a boat in a, from a wheelchair. Yeah, it would be difficult. It was dangerous. So you, you see, in this man's ailment was far greater than my broken leg. And instantly, he's not only healed, but all his muscles and tendons and the ability to move your foot back and forth all work perfectly. Yeah. When they took the cast off of mine, I had to go see another doctor who had to bend my feet, work my legs. Uh, my left leg is still smaller than my right leg, and that was seven years ago. So God, when God does a miracle, he does it the right way. Okay, number four. What did Peter ask the amazed crowd of people that followed him into the temple? Well, the, the, the Peter asked the people why they were so impressed by this healing, by, by what you know they had witnessed, as if he, he, maybe they thought that Peter did it from his own power, that he had some special skill, and Peter knew that that didn't come from Peter. And so he tries to explain that his words, rise up and walk, were connected to the power of Jesus through his faith. It's, it's kind of like when, when you walk into a, a room and it's dark and you flip a switch on the wall and the lights come on. Peter flipped the switch for the healing. Jesus provided the power. Yeah. Amazing power he did. Mm -hmm. Okay, number five. What did the religious rulers ask Peter and John? Well, they asked Peter and John how it was that they were able to heal the man. The Holy Spirit filled Peter and empowered him not only to tell the truth, but also to witness and talk about the salvation available through Jesus Christ. And speaking the truth and being that bold to speak the truth when they knew that these people are the ones that had hurt Jesus so badly. Speaking the truth isn't, is, is not always easy, but it, it's always right. And we always want to remember that Jesus chooses mankind to do his work. He works through the human race, through Julia, through me, through, through you. you. That's how he has chosen to make yourself known to people. So always remember to listen to Jesus. Take time before you act to listen and see what God wants you to do in your life. Okay, our final question. What did the religious rulers warn Peter and John not to do? Well, they told, they told him not to talk about Jesus anymore which seems ridiculous. The religious rulers may have been able to cause trouble and discomfort for Peter and John, but they were not Peter and John's authority. They weren't the, the person, the authority that they answered to. Peter and John answered to God, not to their religious rulers. And today that's important for us to remember. It is. In our church, teaches that and teaches it almost daily that we are to look to God for our answers and the direction in our lives. In we're everything not to we look, do. Yeah, we're not to look at a rule book saying do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It is Jesus and Jesus only. If you learn nothing else from being in a Sunday school class that Julia and I are involved in, please learn that it is Jesus Christ and him crucified and raised from the dead. That's the whole message. That's the main thing. We try to keep the main thing the main mm -hmm. thing. Absolutely. Pastor always says that. Keep the main thing keep the, the main, main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. Don't get hung up on all the little bitty details. Jesus Christ and him crucified. All right. Well, we love you. We're looking forward to seeing you sh soon. Yep. So Julia's going to lead us in a closing prayer, and we will then say goodbye. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder. We thank you for the example of the amazing power and the amazing works that your people can do with faith in you 
and by walking in your path and doing being prayerful um, lord we ask you to give us opportunities big ones but little ones too give us the opportunities to make somebody smile give us the opportunities to help somebody just a little bit and, and help us to recognize that that's what's happening that you're tapping on our shoulder you're whispering in our ear that that person looks like they could use some help with their groceries or that person's having trouble staying on their bike or that person might leave, might need a couple dollars to help them feed, pay, pay for their groceries or feed their family. Help us to recognize, Lord, when those are the opportunities that you want us to shine the light of Jesus in our heart. We ask you to keep us safe. We ask us keep, to keep us close to you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And we say amen. 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 We'll see you next week. We will. And be good. We'll talk to you soon. Looking forward to seeing you. Won't be bye too bye. much longer now before we were there with you in California. And we're looking forward to that too. All right.